Welcome back, Walking Dead fans. It's your fellow Walking Dead brother, Lau Winstrom, coming to you after this... Oh, man. Oh, man. After this... After this terribly, terribly awesome season premiere. And when I say terribly awesome, I mean in the sense of its trauma, of its brutality, of the shock, and the sadness that undoubtedly all of us feel, and our need to be vindicated in the face of what took place in this episode. So I hope all of you can understand that use of the term terribly awesome in its old English sense. Now I want to start off by saying that uh, I will be talking about this episode in some detail, so if you have not seen this episode for whatever reasons and you do not wish to be spoiled, please turn this video off now and await a later more opportune time to watch it. That being said, let me go into some of the things that I think were... Oh, oh I don't know if I can watch this again. Oh, yet I must. I must, in order to give you the breakdown of what I want to do. Oh, oh. <sighs> All right. Deuce. Oh, no. The first thing I want to do before I go into my analysis of this episode uh, is to, in fact, lay some groundwork with you as to what I'm doing and my uh, approach. Now, you may have noticed already that I'm not showing you my face, um, nor am I showing you visually the impact of the emotions that I felt and am still feeling in many ways to what unfolded in this season premiere. I do not do what has come to be regarded as normal or traditional reaction videos. My, my uh, re reaction videos focus on an analysis of what I am looking at and they focus, I hope they help to convey to you through the sense of verbal communication what I f feel, felt, and continue to feel in some cases with respect to whatever it is I'm reviewing. In this case, the seventh season premiere of The Walking Dead, which I think many of you share the con constellation of emotions that I uh, will uh, submit to you for your own uh, analysis, if you will. Uh, and I hope that analysis will help us all work through some of the 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 the, 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 the power of emotions that we no doubt are all feeling. So that is my, I guess you could say, modus operandi. And I will uh, start off by telling you that what I think I want to do uh, in this episode is not just focus on a death scene or two. Uh, it's not just to focus on what took place. It's to focus on why it took place and to focus on the overall complex, the structure, the architecture of what is going to happen from here on out in The Walking Dead. And even though many of us have had our hearts set on fire for revenge against Negan because what of what he has done to two of our most beloved brethren, brothers, on this program, I would like to slay out before you why I believe that even at this critical juncture, when we desire vengeance, and rightly so, we must restrain or at least attempt to restrain even our righteous impulses for impotent revenge at this point, so that the larger house of justice 
may be built so that a greater a greater superstructure can be created so that when the time comes to overthrow Negan, we will have those structures in place. And this is something that I believe Rick will learn, the rest of the family will learn, and yes, actually this is something that I have already articulated in a previous video, Death to the Tyrant, in which I outlined why I believe that it is not simply enough to overthrow or kill Negan himself. You must overthrow the system that this tyrant has created. And in that particular video, I uttered the Latin words, Seek semper evelo mortem tyrannis. Thus always I bring death to the tyrant. And it is because of this that I believe we must restrain for now, hold back for now, those righteous impulses to slay this beast. Because in the process, we are not simply trying to slay him. We are not simply trying to stop him. We are trying to overcome the entire superstructure, the entire complex of what he has and is building. So that being said, let's go on with our analysis of the death scenes and what I want to talk about there. And as I said, the first thing I want to do is to talk about the death. I want to talk about the death of our brother Abraham Ford and why he meant so much to us as a Walking Dead family. So let's get back to that. I've got to start off just by mentioning the, the deuce sign that, um, that Abraham gave to Sasha and I would probably say even by extension to the rest of the family as they may have seen it, but certainly and very especially distinctly to Sasha. We saw her reaction in the next, um, uh, the next uh, angle that came and we uh, understand that he was passing his goodbye to her um, from a previous episode where he did this with her in the last season as she was walking by. So this definitely is something to observe uh, as we watch Abraham prepare to meet his final moments in this dimension of existence. Now one of the things I wanted to say to you is that I believe that Abraham died unbowed and unbroken in this scene. Uh, Abraham died like a champion, like the champion that he was throughout this series. And you can see, as I pointed out to you in a previous video that I did on this last day on Earth, where I pointed, where I made the distinction that, that Abraham stood up to Negan, even though he could not stand on his literal feet, he raised himself up on his knees in order to confound and confuse Negan by letting him know that I am unafraid. Though you grind me into the dust with this bat, I am unafraid of you. And that someday I know my justice will rise up again to meet you on the field of battle and more importantly in the arena of justice. So this is why I say that Negan could not defeat Abraham. All he could do was kill Abraham. And that was why Negan tried to mock Abraham by laughing off Abraham's final words of defiance to him. And I think this is why Abraham died as he lived, like a champion. And so I want to say to Michael Cutlets, and I want to say to Abraham as a character that you are both, as a real person and as a fictional person, beloved Michael, for the, the life that you brought to this character, and Abraham, for the kind of man you were, and the type of example you showed us all in how to embrace life, its ups and downs, and how to conquer those things, those obstacles that stand in our way. 
Abraham Ford was a champion on this show. He was the strength of this show. And Michael, you as an actor, and Abraham, you as a character, will be sorrowfully, sorrowfully missed. Abraham Ford. All right, the reason I'm including this particular part of the scene in our analysis is because I know that there are those of you out there who blame Daryl directly for what happened next. And while we can agree, technically speaking, that his decision and his action was the direct consequence of what took place next, I will tell you that I do not blame Daryl for taking this action. Ultimately, it was impotent, but it was righteous in its indignation and in its feeling, and in its intent to strike back against this wicked man. Now, I will say that I believe that 99.9% .9 of us wish that there was more done to Negan than simply striking him to the face. And I personally wish that it had been Rick who had done this. Rick who had found within himself the courage to stand to his feet and defy this evil individual. But it was Daryl. And I think it was justified that he chose to defend the rest of his family and to try to do something, anything at that point. to get some type of retribution, some type of, of, of payback for what had just happened to Abraham. So I hold no animosity and no fault towards Daryl for what happened next. I just wanted to say that. So let's move on. Okay, I put that particular scene in there, that part of the scene in there, not because I wanted to focus on the brutality and the heinousness of the action, but because I wanted to focus on Glenn's final words, the words that he struggled with all of his might despite having his brain smashed in, despite having his nervous and motor functions severely and critically impaired the final words he forced himself to muster with all of his might to say to his beloved his last words that he would ever speak to her on earth. And now that we have, in fact, heard those words, I want to focus on why that is fitting the character and the humanity and the heart of the person who has been the heart of this story for so long. Glenn Ree. Let's get to a little bit more appropriate focus now. Our brother Glenn Ree was a humanitarian and he was someone who was indeed the heart of this show for over six long years. When we first met him he was green in this post-apocalyptic zombie infested world. In some ways, he might have even been naive. But he never forgot his humanity, and he never compromised that humanity, even in the face of overwhelming danger, even when he had been betrayed by others whom he had placed confidence in, and even when they, in fact, deserved to meet horrible ends at his hands because of how they had in fact, betrayed him. And I think those of you who remember uh, season six, especially in Alexandria, you know what I'm talking about there. But even when Glenn was forced to kill others, he never did so out of spite or hatred or wrath or envy. He did so for survival to protect himself and more importantly, always putting others first to protect others and those he loved. And in Glenn's final moments that I focused on before 
we see that the heart of this show and who he was never left him even when he was facing his final moments. His last words to his beloved Maggie were, I will find you. I will find you. And I think that that encapsulates the heart of this individual on this program. His whole final focus, his every last effort to speak his final words, was focused on the woman that he loved most in life. Someone other than himself. Someone he loved more than himself. And that kind of faith is something that I think should never be forgotten. Not in this character and not in Stephen Yun's portrayal of this character. Because Stephen, you brought this guy to life and you did so magnificently. So we say our final farewells to the character of Glenn Ree. But we say thank you to Stephen Yun for bringing this fantastic person, this wonderful, marvelous human being to life. And Glenn, you also will be deeply and sorrowfully missed. <laughs>